What's up everybody, my name is Paul Davis and today we're combining two worlds into one. Super Mario 3D Land and the world of guitars are joining forces to let me explain one of the greatest ways to make your playing, soloing, songwriting stand out. Wait, we need some more Mario. Alright, Mario, that's what I'm talking about. Also, in regards to current criticism of Richie Blackmore of always playing the right notes. But if you're always playing the correct notes, there's something wrong. This is also a good way to make sure that Richie Blackmore doesn't get bored by your playing. So just like any other Koji Kondo track, this one is amazingly catchy. And beforehand, I'm terribly sorry for getting this tune stuck in your head for the coming at least 24 hours. So one reason it is so catchy, other than the rhythm and the amazing sounds, is the use of chromatic notes. The chromatic scale is a scale containing all 12 notes found in Western music, so basically every note on the guitar. So this opens a whole new playing field, but compared to other scales, this one needs to be handled a little more delicate. Because a lot of those notes will sound terrible if you don't know what you're doing. So let us have a look at the melody from Mario and let me turn on my second camera so you can all have a closer look. So the key of the song is G major. And the first bar is just three notes from the G major pentatonic scale. It starts on... So fret 3 on the E string, fret 5 and 3 on the B string. Just those notes. And there you will find a little chromatic action. And we have to know the chords to know what exactly is happening. So on the G chord, you just place three notes. And this is the point where we're adding that chromatic notes. So after the G chord is a D chord. So the target note on the D chord is in this case the F sharp. And we're walking to that particular note via the chromatic scale. So the F over here, fret 6. So the F results into tension, creating a nice and bluesy sound. So always, when you have a target note, the note before that one could be one half step higher or lower than the note you want to achieve. And it doesn't have to fit the scale, as long as you resolve it correctly. Cool. So now we landed on the D chord. And now we're gonna play a melody also using three notes from the D7 chord. Nothing special about those notes. They fit the D7 chord and they fit the G major scale because we're still in the key of G major. So now we play the melody two times. And now we're leading again back home to the G chord. Again using a chromatic note just before the target note. And the target note in this case is not a very standard one. It's an E. But we're going to the G chord. And we all know the E is not a note from the G major chord. But he does that to create a sort of ongoing motion in the song. If he lands on a note from the G chord, it feels like we're done already. And he wants us to have the feeling we're gonna keep moving forward for a little bit. So the target note is E, and he gets there using the same method. So again, a chromatic note just in front of the target note, being a D sharp or an E flat. So coming from D, same technique, same sound basically, making the chord a G6. Now we're starting over, same melody. But now we're going to a new chord, a C major chord. 
But just before we go to the C, there is a nice melody going on. Again, using a chromatic note. On the G chord, he plays the one, fret three on the high E string, then the two, so the first two notes from the major scale, and then he adds a minor third, just before the major third. Again, to make it sound bluesy, it's something that happens a lot in blues music, playing the minor third just before the major in a major chord. That sound, we all know that sound, right? It's just a minor note just in front of a major note. Typically blues or country or bluegrass, it happens a lot in those styles. So G, A, B flat, B, and then to C major. So fret three is the melody note, the G, the fifth from the C chord. So from G, nice. So just a little bluesy extension in the chord. So the next note is really interesting. He plays a G sharp in the key of G major. That's pretty odd, right? So coming from C, so let me explain what happens. The chord is an F major, with a C as root note, by the way, but that's not really important. The chord is an F major. And now he plays fret four and five. So what happens here is the same thing that happened before. He plays a minor note and a major of the F chord. Making it sound bluesy again. You can call it bluesy, you can call it catchy, you can call it mario -y. it doesn't matter, it's the same sound. So from the F chord over C. Cool. And now we play 3-5-3. Three, three. So you could have done this. But this sounds a lot cooler. Okay, nice. So again, the, ma the minor note turns into the major one. Same technique. Sweet. We continue with the next chord, a G again, and now he just plays the three notes from the G major chord, an arpeggio down. So it's D, G, D. And now this song ends with a classic 2, 5, 1 progression. If you haven't heard of a 2-5-1 progression, here it is real quick. In the key of G major, every chord gets a degree. The G is 1, the A minor is 2, the B minor is 3, the C is 4, etc, etc. And the A minor is 2, the D, which is often the 7 chord, is 5, and the G is 1. 2-5-1 and it's a very classical ending used in classical music, a lot in jazz, and also in Mario music. So it's 2-5-1, A minor, and the melody note is, but again, just in front of this melody note, a half step down, fret four on the B string. So this is just a melody note, it's E, so fret five on the B string. So just in front of the A minor, he played an E flat or a D sharp. Okay, so again, real cool sound. And then the minor seven from the A minor chord. And now we go to the five chord with the melody note fret seven on the E string, fret five on the E string, and then we land on the, the G. So it's a pretty basic melody, pretty basic chords, but there's a lot to learn from this guy. He makes some very cool music. And I bet you can turn this into a pretty cool guitar arrangement. I haven't tried that, but... Uh, so to sum it up a little bit, you can always add chromatic notes to your playing, as long as it sounds good. There are no rules, but there are some guidelines you can try to keep in your mind, like the target note. And before that target note, you can play a half step higher or a half step lower. It doesn't really matter if it fits the key, but as long as the resolution is spot on, it could work. And another one is playing a minor note just in front of the major note of a major chord, which makes it sound real bluesy and cool. So, with those in mind, go your own way and try these out. Please try them out, because 
they can really enhance your playing and make it, like Mr. Blackmore said, much more interesting to listen to. But I'm not an authority on that, so but uh, just sharing his message. <laughs> Uh, all right, have a wonderful day. This was Paul. Um, please check out my Patreon page. Tabs for this are available, as well as the backing track I was playing over in the beginning. Um, and if you'd like to support me, you can do that over there. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. And why not share this video with your friends or click the like button or comment below and let me know what you think. Have a wonderful day. See you next time. Cheers.